Well, good morning. This morning we wrap up our series called The Church is What? And if you've been here with us at any of this, this series so far, you would know that when we talk about church, we're not talking about a building or glass windows or, or music. We're talking about people. The people of God, just like you and me, who believe and trust in Jesus Christ. That's the church. And we've had four images or objects up here to paint a picture, the picture that, that we find in God's word when he describes who we are as the church of God. Some of these images have been good. Some of these images have been embarrassing or bad. Um, but they all come to show us our strengths, our weaknesses, um, and help us to understand who we really are as followers of Jesus Christ. Now, I love my job. I think that I, um, I'm definitely wired to do my job. I'm not wired to be a college professor. I, I know we have at least one or two or three or five of them in here. We're not, I'm not wired to be somebody who sews somebody's insides up. I know we have some doctors in here. I am not um, wired to take somebody's garbage out. I am wired to be a pastor. I'm, I'm confident of that. To walk along with people, to teach people, to lead a local family of faith. But... If I could be somebody else, do you know who I would love to be? Jason Bourne. Yeah, some of you guys are movie watchers or read books, right? Jason Bourne from Bourne Identity. It would be awesome. I mean, he is cool. Special ops. He's, he's powerful. He's strong. He's got the moves. He's pretty good looking, you know? That would be awesome. In, in fact, as a kid, I was always fascinated with the Navy SEALs. I love their training, I love their discipline, I love their, their mission, but what I realize is I am not wired to be a Navy SEAL. I mean, I would use some brutal force kind of thing, and then I would start walking away, I'm, I, you okay? Can I help you? You want to talk about it? You, that wouldn't work, Right? Uh, but, but what I found out is in God's word, we are called to be a little born like. We're, we're called to be a little bit like uh, my butt up here, which by the way is kind of short. We had to put them up. But anyway, we're called to be warriors. All right? Look at, hold that thought for a second and look at this verse up on the screen here. And you can read it with me. It's out of 1 Peter 5. And let's go. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So Peter says, uh, be awake, be alert, be on guard because guess what? We have an enemy. We have this, this, this devil is prowling around like a lion ready to jump on us, ready to attack us. Here's my question. Do you believe it? I mean, think about it. The way that you look at the world, the way you, you think about things and wrestle and work through things, does it allow for space for you to, to really believe in evil and in a devil, a devil that's unseen but is out there and he's, he's, he's whispering in ears and tempting eyes and hindering faith and, and squashing hope? Really? Really? What the Bible says is not only is the devil real, but the fact is, is we're in the middle of a war. There is a battle raging, and we are warriors. And so today, the picture that we, we paint, the picture we unpack, has a lot to do with us, but also a lot to do with him. Because we're in a war, and we are that warriors. So let's dig in. If you've got a Bible, pull it out. We're going to spend most of our time in Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, so once you find that, you can just kind of stick there. If you've got a smartphone, you can go to the website on the screen, uversion.com, where you can see the, the verses and notes and take notes and all kinds of other stuff. Maybe you've heard of this guy named John Ortberg. He's a pretty famous pastor and a, and a pretty famous writer. And he talked one time, or he actually wrote about the biggest gap in the world is not the Grand Canyon, it's not the Atlantic Ocean. The biggest gap in the world is between what we say we believe and how we actually live. Think about that. That, 
that can impact a whole bunch of different things, right? But, but one of the things that I think it really impacts is how so many people in this world, a lot of people in the church, even people in our midst right here, they may say that they believe in a devil and evil, but the fact of the matter is they, they live their day-to-day -day life as if he really doesn't exist. Well, look at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So Paul's writing this letter, it's called Ephesians, and it's to a church that he planted a few years earlier. And, and it's a church that's doing pretty well, it's doing pretty well, but it's getting laxed in a few places. So it's getting a little slack in. And, and what he does is he wraps this letter up and he says, okay, <laughs> Don't overlook this. Don't ignore this. You got to get this. See, the, the fact of the matter is when you're battling with all these things, you have to realize that there's something bigger happening behind those struggles. One that, that we have to be armed and ready for. Because see, the enemy isn't flesh and blood. The battle is against the devil himself. And we, the church, we've got to suit up. But you know, the biggest lie of Satan isn't that we should all start listening to Duncan or Black Sabbath and become all goth and foul Satan. I just dated myself a bit there. The biggest, some people in my generation actually got that. Way to go. The biggest, the biggest lie that Satan sells to us is that he's not really there. That, that we don't really have to deal with him or worry about him. That he's just this little concept that, that shows up on, on movies. A red guy in a red suit that sits on your little shoulder. And when he helps us buy into that lie, then all of a sudden what we think are the big issues, the issues we got to deal with are the flesh and blood kind of issues. You know what I mean? And, and so what I'm worried against is my health. So I got to go see the doctor, take my medicine, and I should eat better and run. Or, or my big war is with my kids, you know, their respect, my temper. So I need to DVR Dr. Phil. Or my big greatest enemy is my debt. And so I need to tune in to Dave Ramsey. And, and those things might be important issues in our lives. But they're only tips of the iceberg. They're only the symptoms of something so much, so much greater. See, behind every issue, every horrible headline in the news, every natural disaster, every uh, family dysfunction, every divorce, every uh, big issue that you come into, every single person who does not have faith in Jesus, behind that is two things. Our sinfulness, which screws everything up, and the devil himself, who tempts and leads and stirs everything up. The real battle is not with our debt or kids or weight or boring job or sister-in-law. The real battle is with the sin that makes us make mistakes and dis causes dysfunction in how we deal with people and how we treat situations. A real battle is with Satan himself, who, who we tend to ignore, but is working hard to distract and confuse and to lead us away from God. And, and, and so Paul wants us to know that if you are a, a baptized believer in Jesus Christ, that you come through these doors, you are not only to be a, a mom or a student or a grandma or a dad or an accountant you are called to be in a war. You are called to be like this guy right here, Jason Bourne-like. You're called to be a warrior. A warrior. Back in college, um, my dorm wasn't the partying dorm. My dorm was the pranking dorm. 
It's a good place to be. And, and so we were always making pranks on different people. Uh, and, and sometimes it was on me, which was okay most of the time, except for this one time. Um, I, I don't remember all the details. All I know is that I was supposed to go into my room and into my closet to get something for one of my friends. And, and I thought it, it was all dark. I thought one or two of my roommates were already asleep. And so I went in there. I was really quiet. I didn't turn on any lights until I got into my, my uh, closet. I turned on the lights of my closet. And one of my roommates jumped out from behind the clothes in a Satan mask. And it freaked me out. Now, I've already told you that I'm not a violent person. If I was, I'd be Jason Bourne. But at that moment, I was a bit like Jason Bourne, and I've never punched a person out and out, but I did that time. Give him a big old black eye. In the moment of battle, we have two reactions, right? Fight or flight. My poor roommate got the fight out of me. So often, I think we get lulled to sleep as far as this whole idea of, of the devil that we, we don't even realize he's there. But when all of a sudden our eyes get open to this, when all of a sudden we realize that it's there, we at times get paralyzed from that reality that there's this, this other war going on that we can't see. And a lot of times we fly. But Paul says we got to get ready and fight. Not flight. Look at how he unpacks that in verse 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, you're able to stand. So stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up your shield of faith, which, can, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So the picture that Paul paints here is not that we're fighting this war from afar. No, we are hand-to-hand -hand battle. We are on the front lines. We are emerged into the, immersed into this, this, um, this war. And so Paul says, get suited up. Put on this armor that God's given to you. He made it. He's, <laughs> he made sure it works. The mesh is going to hold up. The helmet is going to protect. The shield is going to keep all. Well, this is a little shield, but... God gave us a bigger one. The shield is going to defend us from all those arrows. It, it, it's, it's sufficient. So how does the devil get around that? Remember what First Peter said? He prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking who he can devour. He waits till all of a sudden we start lowering our defenses. To all of a sudden, we give him an opportunity. To all of a sudden, we do something stupid. And Paul says, stop stupidity. Keep the armor up. Get ready. Be ready. Void the traps that you fall in. Don't get sucked into those those moments where you all of a sudden uh, flirt with temptation. I mean, you know those things that you fall into. So don't go near them, but keep the armor on and hold firm. Stay in the line. You know, you look at this and you all of a sudden see that, you know, it's pretty defensive, isn't it? There's not a whole lot of space there to get wounded. And that's what Paul's saying. It's... That's what you're supposed to do. That's your job is to hold the line, to stand firm. Don't forget whose armor it is in the battle, battle plan that's been called. It's God's. Don't forget your orders. Don't be a renegade hero and go chasing after Satan himself. I think it's a good picture because at, at times we want to take things in our own hands and yet God is the one who's given us this to withstand the attacks of Satan. Jesus will take care of Satan himself. 
In fact, he already did. He took care of him on the cross. And the victory is won. In just a moment, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper where you're going to come and you're going to be in a, have a time and place where Jesus comes into our, our space and gives us a hug of assurance that even though the battle still keeps raging, the war's won. And nothing can separate you from that. And nothing can overcome you. Because Jesus has won it. There's a passage in Exodus that I think says this really well. Those times when we, we aren't sure if we should do some more or what we should be doing. Uh, it's a time when, when the people of Egypt, they, they had, uh, people of Israel just left Egypt. And, and the Egyptians are coming after them. You know, when they are in the process of going into the desert. And, and they're, they're freaking out. And this is what was said in Exodus 14. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. When life feels like it's coming and attacking us, we need to realize those words. He's given us the armor. He's given us the protection. He's limited what Satan can actually do. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be silent and faithful and relying on him. But that can be scary, can't it? To realize we're in a war. And so Paul goes on and he says this, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert, be on guard, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. I don't know if you know anyone, actually. I know there's a few people here who actually have served in the service before, probably have had active service, um, active duty. But you talk to somebody who's actually been in combat, and they will say, the statement is true. There are no atheists in foxholes. When things are happening and you don't know what's going to happen, you start praying. You may not know who to pray to or what to say, but you start praying. Paul says, you know who to pray to. You're in a war and things are happening, arrows are flying. And when you feel like you're under attack, you have a direct line to the general for the help and the reinforcements you need. So pray. Pray. Look back at verse 17. It says that God has given us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And so all this is defensive. All of this kind of is, is clunky and, and is all about holding the line except for one thing, the sword. The one offensive weapon, which is this, God's Word. And you know what this is? It's not a make-believe story or a a list of rules. It's not an owner's manual or help, a self-help book or, or owner's guide. It's truth. It's God's promises. It's God's salvation plan about how he made things perfect and we messed it up. Of how the war began and how he's going to win it. About how he's already won the war through Jesus. How Jesus is the answer, the way, the truth, the life. And it's only through him. That it's in his name that Satan's powerless. It's in his name that sin doesn't have a hold on us. It's in his name that we can bring hope and help to a world around us that is in the midst of this battle. Satan's plan is to distort this truth. <laughs> it, it's to to help us to lead ourselves into other lies, to sell us certain lies, to get us distracted and away from, from Jesus Christ. But our job as the warriors is to hold the line against Satan when he attacks and to surge forward with our only weapon, which is his truth, to free others that have absolutely no clue about the grace of Jesus Christ. 
you've been around for a little while, you may have heard me talk about us being a missional church or somebody else talking about that. And quite frankly, that's exactly what I mean by us being a missional church. We have a mission. We are warriors. In a little bit, you're going to leave church. You might go to lunch. You might go home. And you're going to pass a lot of homes on the way, unless you're me, which I'll pass like two, but that's a side point. Every single one of those homes is part of our mission. Tomorrow when you go to work, this afternoon when you work in the yard and start talking to your neighbor, or later this week when you sit on the side of the soccer field and talk to other parents that are sitting there watching the kids practice, that's our mission. To reach those people. How will they know if nobody tells them? How will they see unless somebody shows them? Our goal is to take this truth to this world and share it with them in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. This past four or five weeks in the middle of summer, pretty cool. We have been averaging five guest families every single week here at this church. That's exciting. And a big reason why is because of you. Because you're inviting your friends, your family, to come learn about Jesus Christ. And so I ask, who do you know that needs to hear Who do you know? I mean, we were in a Bible study just a moment ago and we were talking about membership of church. There are so many people that are members of church just by name. They haven't been to church in years. Who do you know that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus? I mean, think about the people in your life, your kid's coach or music teacher, a neighbor, coworker, a friend, a relative, And we have a lot of acquaintances in our lives. What if, what if we decided to go around with some of those people and get them together for a barbecue or for, for a, a get-together just to build more of a relationship so you could actually start that conversation of faith with them? What if, what if you were to think of some of those people, a waitress or whatever, uh, a coworker, and once in a while just say, hey, how can I be praying for you? And then actually pray for them. What if some of those people you've been thinking about in your head, you actually invited to come to church with you and offered to treat them to lunch afterwards? That's what we're talking about, being a missional church. That's what we're talking about, being a warrior. See, we're in a war. And we are the warriors. I know that can be scary. I know that can... Uh, seem to be a, a bit outside of our comfort zone. Um, but let me share with you how it ends in Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 37 says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, Jesus Christ. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither heights nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If God is for us, who can be against us? And so he walks us through those times when we are under attack. He picks us up when we get wounded. He pulls us out when we fall into temptation and he gives us the words to share the grace and the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And he leads us to victory because he's won. We're more than conquerors even though the battle rages on. Ever want to be a bit like Jason Bourne or this guy right here? You get to time to fight the good fight. Hold the line against the devil and take the truth to the world. We're warriors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we admit that so often we live in a world um, in a mindset where we don't realize the attacks that we are under. 
where we deny the fact of evil and of the devil. We admit there's even times that, that in the midst of that, Lord, we realize that, that Satan really has sold us on that lie and controlled us. Lord, I thank you that you have won us and forgiven us and set us free. I thank you, Lord, that you equip us to hold the line and stand firm against the attacks of this world and against sin and the death and devil. Lord, I pray that, that you would help us to keep the armor on and hold the line secure. But also I pray that you would help us to look out and see who we can bring the truth to so that we can bring freedom to them also. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This time I'd like to invite the